What's a fear you have of AI? Like if you have like a fearful space that it could go, like, I know you mentioned it a little bit. This morning I, w- I was testing our new model and I got a question. I got emailed a question that I didn't quite understand. Uh, and I put it in the model, this GPT-5, and it answered it perfectly. And I really kind of sat back in my chair and I was just like, oh, oh man, here it is moment. And I got over it quickly. I got busy onto the next thing. But it was like, uh, I mean, it's what kind of we were talking about. I felt like useless relative to the AI in this thing that I felt like I should have been able to do and I couldn't and it was really hard, but the AI just did it like that. Yeah. It was, it was a weird feeling. Yeah, I think that's, I think that feeling right there, that's the feeling a lot of people kind of have like, what's going to, you know, when does it happen? What's going to happen? Um, but I think some of it is, it's like, yeah, you, it's hard to conceptualize until you're further along. I, I'm all, to- totally. I don't think we know quite how that's going to feel. Another thing I'm afraid of, and we had a, you know, a, a real problem with this earlier, but it can get much worse is just what this is going to mean for your mental health. Um, there's a lot of people that talk to ChatGPT all day long. There are these sort of new AI companions that people talk to like they would a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Um, and we were talking earlier about how it's probably not been good for kids to like grow up like on the dopamine hit of scrolling, you know, yeah, for sure. or whatever. Yeah, do you think that, that how do you keep like um, AI from having that same effect, like that negative effect that social media really has had? I, I'm, I'm scared of that. I don't, I don't have an answer yet. Uh, I don't think we know quite the ways in which it's, going to have those negative impacts uh but i feel for sure it's going to have some and we'll have to i hope we can learn to mitigate it quickly what legal system do does ai have to work by is there like a legal like are there like we have laws like in the world right like in the human world is in does ai have to work by any like legal laws you know yeah so i I think we will certainly need a legal or a policy framework for ai um one example that we've been thinking about a lot, and this is like a, maybe not quite what you're asking. This is like a very human centric version of that question. People talk about the most personal shit in their lives to chat GPT. It's, you know, people use it, young people especially, like use it as a therapist, a life coach, uh, having these relationship problems, what should I do? And right now, if you talk to a therapist or mm-hmm. a lawyer or a doctor about those problems, there's like legal privilege for it. You know, like it's, there's doctor-patient confidentiality. There's legal confidentiality, whatever. And we don't. We haven't figured that out yet for when you talk to ChatGPT. So if you go talk to ChatGPT about your most sensitive stuff and then there's like a lawsuit or whatever, like we could be required to produce that. And I think that's very screwed up. I think we should have like the same concept of privacy for your conversations with AI that we do with a therapist or whatever. And no one had to think about that even a year ago. And now I think it's this huge issue of like, how are we going to treat the laws around this? It's one of the reasons I get scared sometimes to use certain AI stuff because um, I don't know how much personal information I, I want to put in because I don't know who's going to have it. I think we need this point addressed with some urgency. Um, and, you know, the policymakers I've talked to about it, like broadly agree. It's just, it's new and now we got to do it quickly. And it's like, well, how long does it take lawmakers to come up with that? And then it feels like it's moving so fast that it's like it doesn't even matter. That, that sometimes it's like it doesn't even really matter. It's like, are we even waiting for the laws to be put around this or or what's going on? Does it feel like it's moving too fast for you sometimes? The last few months have felt very fast. It feels faster and faster, but the last few months have felt very fast. Yeah, I was watching this guy, um, Yoshua Bengio? Yashua Bengio. Yashua Bengio. And he's kind of like some people call him the father of AI. He may be self-proclaimed. I'm not really sure. Um, but he certainly seemed to be kind of like a lifeguard for AI, like thinking about like, well, you know, how do we keep the pool safe? You know, how much water should be in it? You know, the chlorine, what, you know, how many lifeguards do you need on duty? That type of thing, hypothetically. Um, and he said, and he was saying that some AIs, they, they have like deception techniques inside of them, like that, there were AIs that would rather give you an answer that was possibly pleasing to the user yeah. than to give them the factual answer. Uh, and then he was also saying that there were um, AIs that were developing some of their own languages to communicate with each other, which would be languages that we don't even know. Um, what is that? How, how do you guys curtail that when those types of things come up? What does that even kind of fe- feel like to you guys? Or are these just problems that happen 
in new spaces and you figure it out as you go. You know, there, there are these moments in the history of science where you have a group of scientists look at their creation and just say, you know, what, what, if, what have we done? What if, maybe it's great, maybe it's bad, but what have we done? Like maybe the most iconic example is thinking about the scientists working on the Manhattan Project in 1945, sitting there watching the Trinity test and just, you know, this thing that had, yeah. it was a completely new, and everyone knew it was going to reshape the world. And I do think people working on AI have that feeling in a very deep way, you know, we just don't know. Like, we think it's gonna be great. There's clearly real risks. It kind of feels like you should be able to say something more than that, but in truth, I think all we know right now is that we have discovered, invented, whatever you wanna call it, something extraordinary that is going to reshape the course of human history. But if you don't know, we don't know. Well, of course. I mean, I, I think no one, no one can predict the future. Like. Human society is very complex. This is an amazing new technology. Maybe a less dramatic example than the atomic bomb is when they discovered the transistor a few years later. The transistor radio? The, oh, the, transistor the little atom? transistor part that you know made computers and radios and everything else. Mm. But we discovered this completely new thing that enabled the whole computer revolution and is in this microphone and those computers and our iPhones. And like the world would be so different if people had not discovered that and then over the decades figured out how to make them smaller and more efficient. And now we don't even think about it because the transistors are just in everything. We have all this modern technology from that one scientific discovery. And I do think that's what AI is going to be like. We had this one crazy scientific discovery mm -hmm. that led to these language models we all use now. And that is going to change the course of society in all kinds of ways. And, and of course, we don't know what they all are. I was hoping you knew by the end of that sentence. Or I was hoping you would, uh, you know, like that's what we're, because we don't know. You know, like that's, I think, the tough thing. There's no time in human history at the beginning of a century where the people ever knew what the end of the century was going to be like. Yeah. So maybe it's, I do think it goes faster and faster each century. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's certainly like, you know, in 1900, you couldn't predict what 2000 was going to be like. I think in 2000, you could even less predict what 2100 was going to look like. But that's kind of why it's exciting. And like yeah. that's kind of why people get to figure out and unfold the story as we go.